Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Welcome to episode two of the best resins that you can use for 3D printing miniatures. Yes, what we're going to do in this series of videos is we're going to examine a single resin or maybe a mixture of resins to help you decide on what is the best possible resin or combination thereof for 3D printing your miniatures. And I'll maybe throw in a couple of tips and tricks along the way. Sound good to you? Okay, let's go do this. Today's resin is Rep Wrapper. Rep Wrapper resin, Rep Wrapper 201 from Rep Wrapper. Beyond imagination through innovation. Yes, the first thing that, yeah, you hear that? It is an aluminum bottle. Yes, it is an aluminum bottle. It's around, I don't know, half a liter, 500 grams of gray, and it is in a, it is an aluminum bottle. And what I really like about this is, hey, when you're, when you're done, you can reuse it, put other resins in there, use it to mix other resins. What I really dig about this is, first of all, the cap, on this dude is it's a beast to get off because it has one of those little pull twisty plastic thingies that usually cut you up when you do it well once you finally get it off check that out it's got a little plug in there and you need to manhandle it to get out of there and what's really nice about that is plug is in there so good that no resin spills out I know you guys have been using some of these plastic bottles and I don't know where it goes right I mean you try to be as careful as you can and you screw the lid back on and then you look down and there's this line of resin that's kind of pulled down and wherever you set the bottle you got this coffee cup ring of resin and then you got to go clean it up well i haven't found uh, you, you see how clean the bottle is and you see how messy i can be around my 3d printers especially the covers uh but yeah this one this this one's this one's cool i mean this is from uh, aesthetically um, the bottle is just super cool. I mean, I really like the aluminum bottle, but you guys, you don't probably care about the aluminum bottle, do you? You want to get down to the prints? All right, Mr. 3D Print Farmer, let's do some testing. So before I just go off willy-nilly and start printing with a new resin, uh, you really need to figure out the exposure times, especially on something like this. I mean, on resins like Elegoo, or Shriatech. I mean, folks have got spreadsheets out there that show, okay, this is how many seconds you use. And But when you get a new resin, in fact, I, I do this with every resin because you really don't know how old the resin is, how old your uh, your light matrix. Let's say you've been using your resin printer and you're, you've been printing a bunch. Well, those lights, those LEDs, those UV LEDs eventually start to get weaker and weaker and weaker and over time it does take a long it does take a longer amount of time for exposure to get those super crisp prints so what I like to do is I like to use the resin validation matrix and I'm gonna put a link in the description below I did a video on this not too long ago that will help you get the perfect exposure time for whatever whatever resin you're using. So without further ado, I used a couple of the validation matrix matrices, matrices, matrices. Uh, I found out that using my frozen Sonic Mini, that three and a half seconds is going to be the optimal exposure time for the models. Two and a half seconds was a little underexposed, so I chose three and a half second exposure time for my Frozen Sonic Mini for the Rep Wrapper 201. Gray, by the way. Now, what I wanted to do is mix things up a bit. And I know that there's so many miniature models out there, and there's so many creators, and it's just, it boggles the mind. So, on episode one out there, I asked a lot of you guys, hey, what are the best miniature creators out there? And I took a lot of your suggestions. I wrote all those down, kind of stuck them in a hat, pulled one out. This week is One Page Rules. So whoever recommended One Page Rules, you know who you are. Thank you very much. I reached out to One Page Rules and I talked to them. They have a Patreon page. I will place links in the description below. 
I happened to grab their March models. This is one of the larger creatures. This happens to be the Demon of Plague. And yeah, this guy is pretty disgusting. If you can, if you can imagine a plague demon, he's got all kinds of little oozy pores and uh, yeah, I, I, it, it makes my, it made my skin crawl to actually uh, uh, when I saw this, and uh, you know it actually, it actually made my skin crawl, and uh, you know uh, usually an artist does a really good job when they can really scare the crap out of the three D print farmer here, so. Yeah, uh, I don't keep this in my room, and I keep it, you know, I keep it locked up because I don't want. No, never mind. So let's go take a look at some of One Page Rules. Episode two's models are from One Page Rules. War gaming made simple and fun. I am really digging this site. These artists are super talented. Uh, they have 2D models, 3D print models from my mini factory. They have physical models over on Etsy. They have a Patreon set up for the March release, and this is the March release that I pulled the models from. You have the Sisters of Battle, you have the Dwarves, and then you have the Demons of Havoc. The one I printed was the Demon Plague Demon over here, which is super grotesque. And yes, you can get all of these models over on their Patreon site. This guy right here, you get 47 models for 10 bucks. I mean, that is a fantastic deal. This is for the month of March. And if you miss out on March's models, no worries. You can head over to their My Mini Factory and pick up all of these models. And yeah, there's uh, quite a few that, you know, you, you really get this. Warhammer 40k feel for their models, especially for this month. The dwarves are really stinking cool. As you can you can tell the um, th as you're going to see in some of the uh, models that I printed out here, how the chainmail turned out. And this rep wrapper resin does a really good job with all of the details on the dwarves, as you'll see here in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce over here and I'm going to look at some of the combined. Here, let's grab one of these warriors. And as you can see here, they have done an outstanding job. I mean, you go in here, support all of the teeth structure in here. All these supports, they come off super easy. Again, whoever's doing their supports is doing a fantastic job. I mean, look at some of these pinpointed supports right up here around his around the mace. I mean, those are teeny tiny. I mean, and all of you know, uh, I know I know a lot of you that have tried to place your supports, it, it takes time to do a really good job. And hey, these guys have done it for you. So yeah, I would highly suggest going to check them out. Go out here and print some of their, uh, their free models. Uh, I can't say enough good things about those folks. First, I want to give a big thanks and shout out to Nick Passamonte. He was one of the folks that left a comment on the last video suggesting that I take a look at One Page Rules miniatures, and I'm glad I did.
one page rules, you rule. Rep Rapper 201, yeah, let's go down the list. So let's go to resolution. It does a really good job. I believe that for a fast resin, it does a fantastic job pulling in all of those crisp details. Now, some of, sometimes I've noticed on some of the models there's a little bit of a shiny appearance, but that really didn't detract from anything. Now, I had to use the three and a half second uh, layer time, so that may be an issue for some of you guys with monochrome screen monitors having to wait that extra second uh, per normal layer for a fast resin because you may be used to like the two or two and a half second layer, but I, that didn't really detract from, uh, from the Rep Wrapper resin. Rep Wrapper resin. Uh, number two, durability. Uh, I want you to go check this out. I used my long hallway in my house as a craps table. Yes, we're not in Vegas. I use it as a craps table to test the durability of these models. Go, go check this out. So what do you think about that? No missing limbs, no missing weapons, no chips, dings, or anything on these models. I did several rolls down the hall at the craps table. Nothing. These models were super durable. So I give it a 10 plus on durability. So paintability, I used a rattle can spray primer. It did a fantastic job. Uh, it. The model took paint well, it does not scrape off, it sticks well, paintability is uh, a solid tin. I, out of focus here. Now I didn't use an airbrush, but I did buy an airbrush and an air compressor, because I've always wanted to learn how to airbrush, so I better go watch YouTube, right? Learn how to airbrush. Before we talk about cost, I want to mention a few things about Rep Rapper 201. Number one is when you shake it up and you pour it into the vat, it produces a lot of micro bubbles. Now, I particularly don't like micro bubbles because sometimes they tend to leave uh, little artifacts in your prints, and I tend to like those bubbles to settle down. I've noticed a lot more bubbles than I would see in, an, in another type of resin. It may be just the, the formulation that they use, but it does tend to produce a lot of micro bubbles, which is not that really, I mean, this is really not that big of a deal because I'll pour it in the vat and I'll let it sit there for a while and usually the bubbles will, will dissipate. One thing I need to mention about the Rep Wrapper 201 resin, it is, has a quite strong smell. So it, it has a smell, an odor. So yeah, you need to keep that in mind. If I know a lot of you guys that have been 3D printing for a while, some of the earlier resins, um, I'm not gonna mention any names, <coughs> any cubic, have uh, had that strong acrid kind of a smell. This is not that acrid, but I mean, it, it does have a little bit of a chemical smell. So make sure you're in a well-ventilated room and you know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I really like the way this stuff prints. I mean, the that you know, and the cost of this. I mean, out on Amazon, sixteen dollars and eighty-eight cents for a half a liter of this, which I don't think is that bad of a price for the flesh tone, the white, or the gray. Now, what? Oh, hang on just a second. Uh, I I, I got we we gotta go check this out. I got Hot Rod, my miniature dog. He's got something to say. So, Hot Rod, what kind of discount are you gonna give our viewers out there woo 15 percent kidding me so what did you think about that 15 percent off yes hot rod is offering 15 percent off that's using the discount code 15 hot rod that's 15 h-o-t-r-o-d in the coupon code box when at checkout on amazon so thanks a lot for that hot rod hot rod has become a uh, quite the character and he's become quite the mascot on the 3D print farm. I know a lot of you guys enjoy his antics. So yes, 
I'm excited about next week. Next week, we've got a new resin, and I just happen to have it right here. That is from Isun PLA Pro in a tall one liter aluminum bottle. Awesome. And I haven't figured out what we're gonna use next week as far as the models are concerned, so hmm, I may surprise you. Once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments below. All the products that are used during this episode, I'm going to leave links in the description if you'd like to go out and purchase some of the Rep Wrapper 201 or some of the other products that you see here, feel free. Go check them out. Once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. We'll see you again next time. A coat of... So the Demon of Plague, I added a coat of spray primer. Yes, I'm not that adept with an airbrush, but I did pick up one and an air compressor. So I'm going to start practicing my airbrushing skills in the future. Because I've always wanted to use an airbrush and see how it works. So, so yes. Focus, 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 focus. Yes, focus. We are back in focus. We are back in focus now on the 3D Print Farm Show. We are back in focus. So now that we're back in focus, yes, paintability. <laughs>